Start recording now. Colin, I think we're recording now. Hey, we're recording. We live. Just pre recorded just so everybody know. Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Call me Ashalom. Shalom, it's all yours, brother. Khan, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom to the 12 tribes of Israel that scattered abroad. We want to start off by saying, call all Yahweh by Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shai, your brother Shalak. Here I am with the mighty and powerful Yahweh's camp, and we back at it, you know, for y'all to get the wisdom and understanding, get information on this uh, War Zone Wednesday. It's Tuesday, but it'll be uploaded tomorrow. So as um, I have a nice little lesson, I hope it's edifying, you know, for the community and for the nation of Israel. That would be so-called Black, Hispanics, and Natives. And really what I just want to get into is the, you know, the false ideologies of these religions that lead our people astray. And one of the main things that I want to touch into with these false ideologies is how these uh, church leaders, these pastors, these quote-unquote celebrity leaders and all these people in the Black and Brown community, they always have this notion of saying, come as you are. And with that saying of coming as you are, the the door opens up to all types of wickedness. You know, you have people then that could take that and say, you know what? Well, if I could come as how I am, then I'm going to just keep being a murderer. You have people who say, I'm going to just keep on selling drugs. I'm going to keep on robbing. But one of the main things I want to harp into with that type of ideology is the homosexuality that runs rampant within the black and brown community. Um, our people do not want to address said issue. Um, our people want to actually encourage it. And when I'm saying our people, I'm speaking on black and brown, so-called, right? His black Hispanics and natives that are in the world running rampant. Obviously, brothers in the truth, sisters in the truth people that have been, you know, woken up through the spirit and grace of the most high God, Yahweh, we look at that and we obviously know that's something that's not supposed to be done. But as for the rest of our people who run in this world, clueless, bugged out, going with what society tells you, they advocate for it. And some will even, you know, fight tooth and nail for rights and all types of stuff. So I just want to get into this and I hope it's edifying, like I said, and if you get offended, hey, I mean, so be it. Um, we're going to read the scriptures. That's what we're going to do. We're not here to play on people, you know, and say, oh, well, we got to cater to your feelings that, you know, the most high is not a respecter of persons. And the Bible says one thing. We got to go with it. We can't sit here and try to beat around the bush and say, come as you are, because nowhere in the scriptures do you find that phraseology, you know, that, oh, come as you are. Here, it's in this book, in this verse. It's never there. So I want to start off real quick with, um, if I could get somebody to grab the book of Genesis 2 and 24. And if so, uh, in Kazakh, if you could grab me Leviticus 18 and 22, Baba Shah. So, Khan, so as we're going into this, I just want to touch on to this fact because, um, I see a lot within the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native community of our people that be, quote unquote, switching sides, right? You know, y'all know what I mean by that. They switch and what it's doing and see, they don't understand that these are methods and agendas implemented by the heathen to kill us off. Because if you are sitting here and as a man or as a woman and you're trying to procreate because the purpose of you know us man and woman why the most high created us was so that we can be compatible with each other and so that we can procreate as a people but when you stop the procreation essentially you're stopping something that the most high ordained and everything that the most high does is perfect just and right so then for you to go on the contrary and then for people to come up here and advocate for it that just shows that they are anti-God, anti-Christ, uh, and anti-nature. They go against nature itself. So let's go into the scriptures to see what the Bible says, what the Most High says concerning these certain things. 
So yeah, if anybody could read that in um, Genesis 2 and 24, Bible Shop. Come on. It's the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother mm -hmm. and shall cleave unto his wife. Unto his what? Unto his wife. Mm -hmm. And they shall be one flesh. Read. Verse 25. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. You see that? So already in Genesis, when we get the creation, you know, when you go a little couple of verses up, we understand that it says that God created male and female. He made both of them. He did that not just with us humans, but he did that with the fishes. He did that with the birds. He did that with other types of creatures, animals, insects. He did that male and female. And what did he say? He said, be fruitful and multiply. The purpose of Male and female, like I said, is for us to what? Multiply, to reproduce. You cannot reproduce when you have two of the same sexes. There, you're cutting off that bloodline. You're cutting off the reproduction. It's not fruitful. You know how they say sperm is seed? The woman has an egg and she bears what? Fruit and all that. When you have two people of the same sex trying to be in a marriage, that these pastors will advocate for, it's fruitless. You're not bearing fruit. So now let's get um, Leviticus 18 and 22, Bakasha. And now all we're going to keep on doing is going to the scriptures and we're going to show why these things are wrong. And it's not because we say it's wrong. It's because the Most High said it's wrong. The Most High set up everything in divine order so that when we as a people come out into this world, right, to preach, to come into this truth, we realize, you know what, I can't be doing these certain things. This is how we clean ourselves up. But the problem with the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native communities is that we don't want to clean ourselves up. We want to continue moving on in the folly and the madness. You have lots of so-called Black and Hispanic women that love and advocate heavily for homosexual men. But then those same women being hypocrites will get mad because those homosexual men will then want to prey on their children. But they're the ones who would advocate for it. So this is why the men have to gird up their loins, have to be men, follow the scriptures, do what the Most High God says, and go out there and clean up your communities because we can't leave it to certain people. And what I mean by certain people, I'm saying those that are out here in the world with bugged out minds. We can't leave it to the elders of the old generation that still want to hold on to, you know, voting and politics and Christianity. We can't leave it to the young generation because all these young people, all they're doing is following what society says. And society is telling uh, young people now that they can change genders, that they can be, you know, if they want to be a fox, they can be foxes now. So we can't leave it up to society. We can't leave it up to our elders. What we have to do is go to the scriptures and the only person, the only being that can clean us up is the most high God. The only person that would being, I should say, that can actually give us right understanding is the most high God. He's the only being that can actually say this is how you clean yourself up, because we for too long have been following and conformed to the ideologies and society of views, societal views of America. And America has done what? It's been telling the so-called black, Hispanic, and native man, woman, and child that they can just be whoever they want, that they can live a certain lifestyle that is contrary to the Bible, that is contrary to God, and that is contrary to the culture. So let's go ahead and uh, read that in Leviticus. Um, it's the book of Leviticus, chapter 18, and verse 22. Mm -hmm. It says, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. It is what? It is abomination. It's abomination. So when you have certain people trying to say that this is a good thing and that it's all love, what you're doing is you're pretty much saying the Bible is worthless. That's what you're doing. When you try to sit up here and advocate for this, what you are actually enforcing is abominations on the earth. And the Most High, he don't like abominations. The Most High doesn't like wickedness. 
the most high set up everything in perfectly in order. He set everything up for a reason. And for you to come up here and try to say that people could do whatever they want, they can be with whoever they want. You're essentially telling the most high, you know, screw you and you're slapping them in the face. And we're going to get into the reasons why America is like this with this whole pandering heavy to these certain, you know, people of the LGBTQ one through Z, whatever they want to call themselves. Because guess what? America at the end of the day is Babylon. And America is also ran by the same people who gave us Christianity. America is ran by the same people who were ruling ancient Greece, ancient Rome, who did all types of vile, disgusting things. And we're going to get into it. We're going to go into some of the historical things to show why these people come over here and still have this certain ideology. So um, real quick, before we touch into that, can somebody grab me first Maccabees 3 and 48? Because understanding that these religions, these ideologies that have been given to us by our oppressors, they're not going to tell you the truth. And what they're going to want to do is switch things around. They're going to want to actually lie to you. Bold lies, too, because to say that a man can be a homosexual and still and God and Christ will still love him. That's a bold lie. You know, for someone to say as a preacher or pastor to sit up here and say, you can do whatever you want. Don't have to keep the commandments. That's a bold lie right there. Because all throughout the scriptures, we see that we have to keep the commandments. Christ himself says it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And that's out of Christ's own mouth. But then we got these dudes up here on these pulpits saying that don't matter. You do whatever you want. So if you want to be a homosexual, you go for it. Christ loves you. That's what they say. But yet, can they prove that with scriptures? So if somebody could read that book, show. The book of First Maccabees, chapter 3, and verse 48. Can y'all hear me? Con. It says, and laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had the sought whole? the heathen. The heathen. Had, had sought ahead. to paint the likeness of their images. Right. So in this time, this is during the time of the Maccabees with the Grecians, right? The Grecians, it says right there, they laid open the book of law and they want to paint the likeness in their images. So that is what we see with, you know, all these whitewashed images. Now, if you think you could look at that precept and go, OK, well, that's it. They just want to paint the images in their likeness. If they did that, wouldn't these same people also want to say, you know what? Let's change the actual meaning. Let's change the message. If they want to paint themselves in the likeness of their images of, of what the Bible is, they're also going to want to change messages. They're also going to want to start, you know, uh, mishandling and misinterpreting and actually trying to uh, cherry pick certain things. So these same people who are the Grecians, which we know are Dumians, Edomites, this is what they did. What did they do? They want to change the images. They wanted to also come and try to change what the Bible really is. And that's how you get all these doctrines of Catholicism, Christianity, Baptist, Methodist, and all this other stuff, which all st stems back to Catholicism, because the word Catholic just means universal Christian. So now let's get into that. Hey, uh, if you could pull up that um, joint on Constantine real quick. And we're just going to go into the little paragraph that talks about his uh, historical appreciation. So Constantine was a Roman. And we know that the Greeks and the Romans, you know, these people were doing all types of vile things. And not only that, but these people also persecuted the Jews. These people murdered our people. These people were at war with our people. So for us to want to sit here and try to still hold on to the ideologies of what these people try to preach to us, it makes no sense. Con, you can uh, scroll down. Uh, it goes in. Yeah. You is going to say historical appreciation at the as the header. Yeah, you keep going down. There we go. 
heritage, historical so, appreciation. Uh -huh. Well, you wanted to say something? Con, I mean, I was going to read it, but if you want to read it, you can. Yeah, I got you. It says, Constantine can rightfully claim the title of great, for he turned the history of the world into a new course and made Christianity, which until then had suffered bloody persecution. Uh huh. The religion of the state. Right. So here we go with this dude, Constantine. He made Christianity the religion of the state. And who were the Christians that were suffering persecution? It wasn't the Romans, and, and, you know, it was actual Jews calling themselves Romans, living in Roman customs that were actually coming back to understanding who they were. That is why Paul has a whole book called Romans. Why would, you know, Paul, and this is just a sidebar, why would he write a book to the people who, ha who have his people at oppressed? Well, what sense does that make? So we got this dude, Constantine, who, when you look into it, talks about how he had a vision and he saw the cross, which we know to go back to uh, the Babylonian gods and deities, which is a Tammuz. Um, he had a vision. He saw the cross and that that was going to help him, you know, win the war, whatever. Let's continue reading on. Huh. It says it is true that the deeper reasons for this change are to be found in the religious movement of the time. But these reasons were hardly imperative as the mm. Christians formed only a small portion of the population being a fifth part in the West and the half of the population in a large section of the East. Constantine's decision depended less on general conditions than on a personal act. His personality, therefore, deserves careful consideration. Mm -hmm. Long before this, Belief in the old polytheism had been shaken in more stolid natures as Dios, Diocletian. It showed its strength only in the form of superstition, magic, and divination. You see that? So that was one thing that the Romans uh, did believe in a lot was magic, superstition, divination. Same thing with the Greeks. You know, they believed in their gods of Apollo, Zeus, and all them, and all this magic and divination. And even Constantine himself at one point was worshiping the sun, you know, the sun god, which the Romans, we know that that's what they did, you know. They changed the actual Sabbath that, you know, we know it's supposed to be from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. They changed it to what? Sunday, so they could have that worship, so they can worship the sun. And Constantine himself, you know, at one point, was a sun worshiper so but yet this is the guy who made christianity the religion of the state a sun worshiper right these are the people who enforce this uh ideology on our people this is why we as so-called black Hispanics natives we got to go into our history we got to look at these things and read to understand what is it that we're really following you know a lot of us we go blind into these religions a lot of us are forced into it due to family you know you're a child. You don't want to go to no church and see some sweaty dude on a pulpit screaming and shaking. But you're there because your parents dragged you into it. And because you're a child, you don't have a say so, you know, and even if you want to say so, you might get, uh, you know, you might get whooped or disciplined because now you're going against them. Right. They might even try to say that you got demons on you and have the whole church pray for you. So that is why, though, we as a people, we got to actually start coming out of these ideologies. We got to start coming out of, you know, this world, leaving America behind, leaving this world behind. So if you uh keep going a little down, because it does talk about where he uh right there. Actually, matter of fact, it's in that same joint. Yep. The next, uh, yeah. We're at the. You see, it says Oriental religions and the worship of the sun. Ah, OK, right here. Uh, under the forms of various oriental religions, in the worship of the sun, in the veneration of Mithras, in Judaism, and in Christianity, whoever wished to avoid making a violent break with the past uh, and his surroundings sought out some oriental form of worship which did not demand from him too severe a sacrifice. In such cases, Christianity, 
naturally came last. Probably many of the more uh, noble-minded recognized the truth contained in Judaism and Christianity, but believed that they could appropriate it without being obliged on that account to renounce the beauty of their of other worships. You Such a that? man. Salakia, but you see that it says that they could that they had the beliefs that they could appropriate it without having to renounce other worships. So you see what these people were doing. Hence why modern day Christianity right now is a is just a, a you know a cesspool of just madness. You got East, you know, Christians, right? In quotations, they they're celebrating Easter, Christmas, they got the cross up there. Where are all these things coming from? We know that Easter coming from Ishtar. Christmas is coming from Nimrod, right? Then you got the cross, which is coming from Tammuz. You got all these different pagan, you know, religions and customs now being appropriated with Christianity. Let's continue reading. Uh, where was I? Um, but uh, right there was a such a man. Ah, such a man was the emperor Alexander uh, Severus. Uh, another, another thus minded was Aurelian, whose opinions were confirmed by Christians like Paul of Samosata. Not only Gnostics and other heretics, but Christians who considered themselves faithful, held in a measure to the worship of the sun. Leo the Great in his day says that it was a custom of many Christians to stand on the steps of the church of St. Peter and pay homage to the sun by obeisance and prayers. Uh, when such conditions prevailed, it is easy to understand that many of the emperors yield to the delusion that they could unite all their subjects in the adoration of the one sun god who combined in himself the father god of the Christians and the much worshipped Mithras. Mm -hmm. Thus the empire could be founded anew of unity of religion. Even Constantine, as will be shown farther on, for a time cherished this mistaken belief. You see it, that? So you see right here that these people, these Romans, right, these Greco-Romans, they're appropriating their customs, their beliefs onto something that was never theirs. If they want to keep worshiping the sun, go do that. Go keep it on that side. But what do they want to do? They want to grab the Bible. They want to grab the actual Christians, right? And then they want to grab their BS and madness and force it all together and say, you know what, you actual Christians, look what we're doing. They had them worshiping the sun at St. Peter's Church. Now show me in the scriptures where God said you must worship the sun. Show me in the scriptures where Christ says you must worship the sun. I thought God said that you were not supposed to have any other gods before him in the book of Exodus 20. I thought he said you couldn't worship or give praise to any other thing that is above the, you know, the sky, that below the waters. I thought we couldn't do that. But yet these Romans, these Greco-Romans, this is what they're doing. And yet this is something that our people want to continue following, which is Christianity. And these are the, you know, the deep ties of what Christianity goes back to with these Romans, with these Grecians of how they want to sit up here and appropriate customs and beliefs that they already have and try to put it into something that's holy, which is the actual Bible. Now, um, if you want, let's get into, uh, Go uh to to do to um it's that one link I sent you with the sacred band of thieves. I think it's uh it should you said be the sacred a, land of thieves. Sacred band of thieves. It's oh, a band. link. Um, it should be the. Oh, is it in this or oh, is it what you already sent me? Con con. It's with what I sent you. It's, it would be the legacy project. Okay, I see. Sacred Band of Thebes. Come on. Uh, let me pull it up. There you go. Oh, damn. 150 gay male couples. So, mind you, um, if there are kids here, uh, maybe you might want your child. If they're under the age, I'll say of 12. Hey, it's uh, 9 o'clock. Bring her to bed. 
yeah, put them in bed. If they're 12 and older, they good. Because there will be some graphic things in here concerning these Greco-Romans and their vile, disgusting behavior and lewd acts. So, yeah, if you got kids, um, you might want to put them to bed. If they're 12 and up, let them stay and watch this so they can understand the information. But um, here we have with the Greeks, um, the sacred band of thieves. And uh, after this, Mohar, just go on Google and type in uh, Greek gays and it will pop up. But this is what I want to get right now for the Grecians. Damn, did you say Greek gays? Con. Well, this is what came up for Greek gays. Right, right. You want this one? Uh, scroll down is the, the AI overview. Oh, uh, no, I didn't give me AI. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you go back up then, there's one source that talks about um, how the Grecians had seven different types of of uh gay um marriages i mean i didn't know there were seven different types but according you know to uh the grecians that's what they did but we could just read that uh thieves joint in the meantime okay just so, yeah con we want the whole thing or just that top section uh just get that top section okay good Actually, Salati, we'll get we'll get uh we'll get up to the part you see where it says um past Alexander the Great. It says he wept all the way down there. It says he wept. Mm, I'm sure I'll find it. Um, okay. But it's the sacred band of Thebes. It says mm -hmm. uh, the sacred band of Thebes, a troop of soldiers that consisted of 150 gay male couples, formed the elite force the elite fruit cups um, formed the elite force of the Theban army in the fourth century BC. The rationale behind the band's composition was that lovers would fight more fiercely and cohesively than strangers with no ardent bonds. Theban general Pelopidas formed these couples in a distinct unit, the special forces of Greek solidarity. <laughs> Uh, I, I, yeah, he's, he's an idiot. Anyway, uh, the 40 years of their known existence from 378 to 338 marked the preeminence of Thebes as a military and political power in late classical Greece. The sacred band fought the Spartans at Tigera in 375 BC, vanquishing an army that was at least three times its size it was also responsible for the victory at Leuctra in 371 BC that established Theban independence from Spartan rule and laid the groundwork for the expansion of Theban power. Their only defeat came at the Battle of Chironia, Chironia in 338 against Philip II of Macedon and his against son, Alexander the Great. Against who? Against Philip. Uh, the second of Macedon and his son, Alexander the Great. You see that? And don't we see these men in the Bible? King Philip of Macedonia and his son, Alexander the Greek. Don't we see, see these men in the Bible? And then it said, after Alexander died, many evils multiplied. Now let's keep on reading. Uh. Uh, it says, it is written that Philip, after the fight, took a view of the slain coming upon the place where the 300 that fought his phalanx lay dead together and understanding that it was the band of lovers he wept he around did what he wept so you mean to tell me he cried over these sodomites because he realized oh these men were all lovers that was king philip crying over sodomites so this is what we say that these people, the, these Greeks and these Romans, they're the most vile, these Idumians, right? The Edomites, they're the most vile, disgusting people on the planet, the base men that the Bible says. This man went to war with these uh, 150 gay Grecians, right? Kills them. Once he realizes, oh my gosh, it's a band of them. They're all lovers. 
What does he do? He don't just walk away and say, all right, the war is over. No, he cries for them. Why would you cry for something that's wicked and evil? If I saw a brother that was uh, doing something very evil, very wicked, right? And something, you know, happens to him. He gets judgment put upon him and the brother never repented. I'm not going to cry over that. Why would we cry over something that was very wicked and evil? But he did. The Macedonian cries. He cries uh -huh. over, over sodomites. Hey, Salaki, real quick. Am I going crazy or is this because I, I, I'm, I'm reading it and it says uh, where the 300, uh, where is it? Where the 300 that fought his phalanx lay dead together. Mm -hmm. Is that talking about the 300 that's based on the movie? Uh, who knows? I mean, that, them Grecians, man, they did all types of vile, disgusting behaviors. Hmm. So who knows? I thought they were fighting against the um, the Persians. The Persians. Hey, you never know, man. These people, like I said, they just do all types of disgusting things, and our people want to continue following after the, the ideologies in America. So we see that, right? Now, uh, let's go back to uh, the Google and type in um, Greek pedastry. Because so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native man, woman, and child live in America, they can see, even if they're not in the truth, okay, there's all types of wickedness going on in America with these people that claim to be it's all love and all this other stuff well let's see why is it that you have these homos these trannies these uh pedophiles running rampant in america and nothing's happening to them we're showing you why because the same people that are ruling this land these are the descendants of the same people that ruled ancient greece that ruled ancient uh, rome now those same people are now ruling in Babylon 2024, present day. So let's read that with pedestrian. Uh, you want me to do it or one of y'all brothers want to jump on this? Yeah, hey, I'll read it. It don't matter. It says, pedestrian in ancient Greece was a socially acknowledged romantic relationship. <laughs> between an older male and the younger male, usually in his teens. It was characteristics of the archaic and classical periods. The influence of pedestry on Greek culture of these periods was so prevalent that it has been called the principal cultural model, model for free relationships between citizens. That is what these Greek Grecians were participating in. That is what these Romans were participating in. Boy love. These men were out here taking children and doing all types of abominable acts to them. Is that not what we see in present day America where you have little Billy? He grows up to be a, an actor. He's a little actor on Disney. He's doing all the little Disney and Nickelodeon shows. And you wonder why little Billy be looking weird throughout the years. Why little Billy's acting funny. Why little Billy, you know, he just don't associate with certain types of uh, things. But then he comes out when he's 24, 25 and talks about how he was in Disney and in Nickelodeon run, getting ran up through in Hollywood. Y'all don't see that. Our people don't see these things. All these celebrity kids that were on oh, a bunch of these shows be coming out once they're in their 20s and 30s and they just open up and say, look, such and such did this to me. I had to go through this in order for them to continue the show. They said they were going to cut it off after season two. And if I wanted to do another season, they had to do this, this and that. That's what goes on in America because the same people that rent, that run America are these right here, these base men the ancient Grecians and the ancient Romans. And yet we as a people, as a community, so-called black Hispanics, what do we want to do? We want to actually follow that and participate in it. We want to actually say it's cool, but yet but at the same time be hypocrites about it 
because you will never say pedophilia is cool, but yet you allow these men to come in here and implant that ideology into your brain. Because in order for you to start accepting all this other stuff, you're going to have to accept pedestrian at the same time. I don't care what nobody says. If you're willing to accept, um, you know, homosexuality, trans and all this other stuff, you are willing to accept pedophilia. You may say no, 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 but deep down you are. Because in order for you to accept that, you have to first accept all the other madness, which is contrary to what the Bible says of what marriages are, what sex is, what's, what it's supposed to be between a man and a woman. But yet our people would fight tooth and nail against the Israelites, against brothers and sisters that are in the truth to advocate for these people who practice said practices like this, which is boy love, because that's what the word pedestrian means, boy love. And yet, what do we do, people? Do we keep running with what society and what these pastors and what these lying uh, celebrities are telling us to do? Because they're all learning from who? From the elites, from the Grecians and the Romans who practice said things. Now, if you could grab me, Ak, um, the, uh, the other article, which would be... Um, the University of Birmingham article, Bob Gashaw. Hey, so lock you real quick. And hey, we was going into that last week too, uh, on that lesson, going into the um Jewish type move about the pedophilia. Con. You see that? And when you go into their history, they descend from the Greeks and the Romans too. Con. Yeah, yep. fake Jews. Con. That's why uh, it says in Revelation 2 and 9 that those, you know, those that say they are Jews and are not, you know, it's a blasphemy because they're running amok saying that they're the real Jews. But yet, just like how the uh, mighty captain brought it out in their Talmud, you allow pedophilia. How are you the real Jew? But your book says that a man can sleep with a three year old girl, that a nine year old boy, if his older brother dies, and he's married, that that nine-year-old boy has to sleep with that woman. He's nine years old. All he cares about is damn cars and, and Spider-Man, maybe. But yet, that's in the Talmud. And yet, they say that those people are supposed to be the real Jews. That's the blasphemy. That's the bold lie. And that is why also America and all these other people, you know, push for it. Because who's the main influence? America teaches us as so-called blacks, Hispanics, and natives, that those people that we're supposed to believe that they're the real Jews, right? Well, if they practice pedophilia, homosexuality, they run the porn industry, they run all types of vile things, they do bestiality. If they do all those things and America is enforcing that onto our people, what happens with our people then? Those that are not in the truth, they're just going to eat it up and say, okay, well, those are the Jews. The Jews could be gays. The Jews, the, yeah, sure. It says it right here in the Talmud uh, that they can marry and sleep with three old girls. Sure. And that is why we as a people are destroyed. That is why we can never. Uh, matter of fact, somebody grab me real quick. Uh, in Ecclesiastic, he's uh, never trust thine enemy. Ecclesiastic is Salakia. We can never trust these people. You can never trust these people because these people will lie to you to your face and then spit in your face by telling you it's okay to do something that's contrary to what the Most High God says is not okay to do. These people will sit here and tell you it's okay to put, you know, to mark your body up with tattoos. It's okay for you to eat pork. It's okay for you to, uh, uh, you know, eat shrimp. It's okay for you to dress however manner you want to. But yet... The scripture says that you're not supposed to do those things. That is why you can't trust these people, because these people then go to your kids and try to influence them with their uh, BS ideologies, telling a child of the age of five that that child can now be a, a girl when that child doesn't know nothing about sexuality. But yet they want to advocate and push this. But yet they say that these are the people that they follow who are the so, you know, the so-called Jews, which really are the Jewish people. Go ahead and read that. Bible show. Uh, you got this it. Is book of, oh, okay. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 10. 
Never trust thine enemy. Mm -hmm. For like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. You see that? So is his wickedness. The wickedness of these Grecians, the wickedness of these Romans, it goes deep into who they truly are, the base men, the Edomites, right? Look how deep their wickedness is that they would actually allow practice such as pedestrian within their culture and say that is normal. You know how vainly wicked you have to be in order to say that a grown man sleeping with a child is normal? You have to be saying himself, and that is why we be out there saying that those people are the devil, that they are Satan. Because they're the devil, why? Because they're the liars, right? They lie. And they're saying because they're adverse to us, they're adverse to the Most High God. These people are the walking embodiment of the spirit, Shatan. So you can never trust them because they want to sit up here and put these false pastors in your face like the T.D. Jakes, like the like the Joel Osteens and all them, and say, do whatever you want. So now... Um, hey, Salaki, so two things. Um, one, uh, that article, I think the only... I don't think I see it in there. I see Constantine. I see the, the Thebes Project. And then you got one LGBT History Month. Con, that's the one. That's the that's one. That's the one? Con, that's the uh, University of Birmingham. Yep. Okay, cause um, wait, am I looking at something? From a Thomas Foster? Uh, it should, should be the Paul University. No, no, it should be uh, the the one that says that LGBT History Month. Uh, male homosexuality in ancient Rome. Con, that's the one. Okay, con, it's up there. So no, actually, I wanted to just go into the precept that you were just bringing out about never trust an enemy. See, this is what the enemy has working for, for our people, of course, you know, in California, you know, they have the, the new bill, it's called Bill 1414, right, where they, uh, uh, they take the uh, punishment for engaging with an underage or a young person, right, and they shrink it tremendously. So you can now in California, you can buy or solicit sex from a child. Um, it's only a misdemeanor. It's no longer a felony. That's madness. Right. And, and, and the fine that you get is from two days to one year in jail and up to a $10,000 fine. Now, this is legal right now in California. Right. And this this article that I actually pulled up, this was a uh, uh, a Democrat in California who was like, yeah, I'm done with y'all. You know, he, he slamming the uh, uh, the governing party because she's tired of. Like it says here, I'm done with us protecting child abusers. Right, but this is stuff that they want to continue to push. They they want to continue to uh, make this stuff to where it's just a slap on the wrist, and then pretty soon you're going to be seeing full, you know, old men walking around the streets with little kids, right? And then what are we going to say? We can't say nothing about it. Hey, right? so lucky. That's the disgusting nature of these people. Hey, so lucky. And for all those of our people, you know, that plan on uh, or already voted for Kamala Harris and she pushed that heavy, that, uh, you know, that tranny stuff like she if you really look into it, she really um, she helped pay for uh, some people to get their sex change. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of our people, you know, that like the brother said, you know, that would be that would make you a hypocrite, right? If you disagree with pedophilia and you disagree, you know, with uh, gay pride and you go for Kamala Harris, she promote that, right? Hey, I know she definitely put it in one of her, um, I remember seeing this video of her talking about uh, putting it in her, if she gets elected president, that she was gonna put in a, a, a bill or a law that, we have that, not we, I, I ain't fucking there, but the government has to 
fund uh, sex changes for uh, even up to minors. Right. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Why? Yeah, looking into that, yep. Yeah. That's madness. Why? Why do the government have to fund that? And mind you, just to add on to that, uh, who's paying for it? It's us, because the government gonna take that that tax money out of our checks that we busting our ass for, working 40, 60 hours a week trying to make a living. They gonna take that money from us so they could go give it to a dude because now he feel like he want to be a woman. That's that's wicked, and that's the madness of this country, which is why the most high he are hey, all we're doing, we're praying for that day when when the most high put it in Putin's spirit to drop them atomic bombs. Y'all gonna see and understand why this place has to get burnt up. Because Kamala Harris, she's not gonna pay for that herself. She ain't going saying how much you need ten thousand dollars for your sex change. Here you go. She's not doing it herself. Uh, the government officials, they're not doing it themselves. They're going to take that money out of your black ass pockets, right? You working hard, working, sweating, right? Breaking your back. They're going to take that money out of your pockets and say, all right, we're going to go give it to uh, this woman because now she feels like she wants to be a man. So we're going to give her the money to, uh, you know, take all types of testosterone pills and, and go through the procedures. Come on. And here, here's, here's the article right here. As a matter of fact, it was in 2019 that she said it, right? So she said it in the past, and this is what, where they get caught up at because they say it in the past, and of course they honor it in the future, but then sometimes they act like they didn't say that. Right. You know? But here it is right here. It says, and this is for uh, detained migrants, right? So imagine her stance on people who actually want to voluntarily do it. You know, uh, it says Harris told the ACLU in 2019 that she supports cuts to ICE funding. ICE are the uh, the illegal, illegal uh, I forget the, the acronym, but it's basically to get those who are crossing the border illegally and kick them back over, essentially. It says we're going to cut ICE funding and provide gender transition surgery to detain migrants. That's crazy, yo. And this is the woman that our people want to want to put in office. That's the that That's the thing. What does that do? Go back to the header up. It says and providing gender transition surgery to detain migrants. Well, like, what does that do for the country? What does that do to boost, uh, let's say, spirituality? What does that do to boost morality? What does that do to boost anything? You're not doing nothing with that. You're not. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna help provide so you can transition. What does that do? You're not making the economics better. You're not making your military better. You're not making your resources better because you want to be a vain, wicked, vile person. That's what you're doing that for. And uh, Khan, you can go back to that other article you pulled up about the uh, about California, because. And um, just like how you have that right in California, if I'm correct, in Texas also, you're allowed to marry animals. So now you could practice bestiality in some states in the United States of America. Damn, so, yeah. somebody's gonna be clapping some. Uh, right. Horse. Yeah. So you got you got homosexuality, you got transsexuals, you got pedophiles, and bestiality. All running rampant right now in America. What do you think is the next step that these people are willing to put? And mind you, they keep pushing it and trying to, you know, see where they can move the goalposts to. And the so called Black, Hispanic, and Natives, all they keep doing is going with it, as opposed to saying, no, draw the line right here. We're not going past that. So called Black, Hispanics, and Natives just been allowing it and allowing it. Next thing you know, you're going to see necromancy. That's going to be allowed. You're going to see all types of just vile, disgusting things going on. How much more wicked does this place have to become in order for y'all to see that we shouldn't be trusting these people and we should not be following their ideologies? How much more wicked does this place have to become in order for the so-called black, Hispanic and native man, woman, child say, you know what? 
We got to really break ties with this country. We got to break ties with these people. We got to break ties with the God that they worship. Because if the God they worship a lot allows for pedophilia, what else does that God allow? I'll tell you what he allows. The God that they worship allows genocide, rape, robbery, murder, lies, theft, uh, treachery, deceit, uh, mass incarceration of, of, of minorities, in quotations. That's the God that they worship that allows them to do all that. Not the God of the Bible, though. The God of the Bible tells you, you can't do these certain things. And yet these people want to sit up here and claim to be Christians. These people want to sit up here and claim to be uh, holy Catholics and all that. That's madness. This is the wickedness of America. And this is why our people cannot trust these people. That is why we have to understand who is our God. Because if the God that you worship allows homosexuals, guess what? Your God is false. And your God is a weak God. Straight up and down. Now, uh, if you want to continue reading that article, you cannot. Or if you want to go into the uh, the one I provided with the uh, University of Birmingham. Yeah, kind of. We can go into that one. Um, what the hell you see the University of Birmingham? It was the one with the uh, ancient, uh, it, was, it said uh, male homosexuality in ancient Rome. Yeah. Uh, Beacon. Let's see what pops up. Is. Oh, I see what happened. That's the one. Because yeah, this one was... over here, I don't know what the heck happened here. Okay. I see what you're saying. Con. Well, here we go. Now we went from the Grecians, and obviously we just touched a little bit on the Grecians. If you want to do your own research, you can delve into and see how much more wickedness the Grecians were doing. Alexander the Freak himself did all types of disgusting things. All y'all got to do is go into, you know, Google. Salaki, all you got to do is go into Google, go into the library, get some books, and read about these people. Read about how, you know, disgusting and vain they are. So now we're gonna go into now, you know, their counterparts, the Romans. Kind of somebody wanna get that. Who wants it? Who wants it? Con, huh, just a paragraph. Uh con, we'll uh yeah, we'll read that first paragraph and then we'll scroll down and I'll read the I'll read the second one. Some of the presentation? Uh, Khan. All right. The presentation and perception of homosexuality in the Roman world was vastly different than how it is today. And it gives us an example of how homosexuality has been indebly, indelibly linked with communications of power and authority in antiquity. The Latin language has no word for either homosexual or, oh, sorry, sloppy, heterosexual or homosexual, and instead partners in a sexual relationship would be presented as either active, synonymous with masculinity, or passive and therefore feminine, regardless of the gender of the individuals involved. Freeborn male Romans had the civil liberty to do as they pleased, when it came to sexual activity. And as such, the concept of a Roman man engaging in homosexual sex is in no way controversial or taboo to the Romans, as long as it fell within certain parameters. You see that? Now, what the hell does that right. mean? It, fall, it has to be in certain parameters. You're already going off. You're telling me it's all good for a man to sleep with another man it's all good for a man to sleep with a child because says they even have they're pleased to do whatever they want as long as it falls in certain parameters. Well, what are those parameters? You already broke them once you said, yeah, two dudes could sleep together. What are the parameters then? Tell me. Oh, you got to be of a certain status. That's what they say. It don't matter. So you got one wealthy dude and one poor dude. They're still gay. You got two poor dudes. They're still gay. You got two wealthy dudes. It's still gay. And then it says it's not controversial or it's ta or taboo. So, again, same thing like with the Greeks. Here come their counterparts, the Romans, running amok, doing all types of things. 
And hey, what was Constantine? A Roman. What what was he? What he do? One of his one of his biggest, you know, uh, I guess they say achievements. He pushed Christianity to be the religion of the state. Now, if you go down a little bit, you could look at that picture. I don't know if you could blow it up a little bit, but there's a little message under that picture. And it says right there, look at that. Same sex relationships are featured in the Greco Roman drinking cup. You able to blow that picture up or no? Con. Yeah, that's good right there. We don't need to get too deep into it. Look at that. So it's all over their history. And yet we're supposed to sit up here and, and you know, just allow all this. You know, we're supposed to sit up here and just eat all this up and say it's all good. We could go back to the uh, paragraph. I, I wanted to uh, read these next two. So you got this going on with these people. They brought that and influenced our people now. And now our people think it's all good. But let's read this right here. So it says Rome was a deeply militarized state with conquest and dominance deeply ingrained as desirable masculine traits. As a result of this, men were free to engage in homosexual relationships so long as they were the active partner with the penetrative power and the submissive partner was considered to be lower in society than them. For example, a free Roman man would not be subject to any form of discrimination if he engaged in sexual activity with a male slave, former slave, prostitute, or actor. Keep in mind actor and what happens a lot here in Hollywood. Okay. But coitus with another man of the same social class would be taboo as the act of being penetrated as a male was seen to encroach on a man's integrity and compromise his status. So you could be rich, you could be Bill Gates rich. And if you're sleeping with a middle class dude, that it's all good. But if Bill Gates was, was to sleep with Elon Musk, now they say it's controversial. What kind of shit is that? Salakia for the language, but how? What, what kind of madness is that? So it's good for uh, one's rich and the other one poor. But then if they're both rich or of high social status, now it's, now it's controversial. That's wickedness. That's madness. Despite the fact if they're rich or poor, men should not lay with men. Why? Because we read it in the scriptures, Leviticus 18 and 22. The Most High God said it's an abomination. Not to these people, though. Let me keep reading. And it says right here, um, young men, pay attention now. Young men, specifically between the ages of 12 and 20, were seen as perfectly acceptable sexual partners for a Roman man. And to an extent, there was a cultural expectation for older Romans to seek. So now you got what? You got little kids, literally a 12 year old. That's a child. You mean to tell me now that it's even being expected? Expected by the Romans to go out here and say, you know what? They're gonna, I'm gonna grab me a 12 year old. That's who's gonna be my partner. That's madness. That is wickedness. Yeah, that's crazy. That's yeah. Go ahead, Ox. No, I was just saying, yeah, that's that's wicked. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, Straight madness. So now uh, let's keep reading. Let's go down a little bit. It says, however, free Roman boys and young men. We're strictly off limits. So now, now there's a limit. Not, not when you let dudes already be doing, you know, lightsaber fights already. No, th that wasn't the limit. Now there's limits. This is madness. Let's uh, keep scrolling down. Because the next paragraph, and like I said, if y'all had kids, uh, definitely for this next paragraph, put them up. Because this is about a... The these these Edomites really are just vain, disgusting people. Let's uh go down a little bit. I... Khan. So now we're getting into even some of their emperors. 
here we have Emperor uh, Hadrian and his lover, Antonius. So let's read it. Uh, I'm going to read right here what it says, um, we see numerous reports of Roman emperors engaging in such relationships, the most famous being the rela relationship between Emperor Hadrian, uh, 117 to 138, and the Greek youth, Antonius. Hadrian met the 13-year-old Antonius while on a tour of the provinces in 123. And while the specificities of the relationship are largely unknown, the two are believed to have engaged in a pederastic relationship until Antonius' death at the age of 20, when he drowned in the Nile. Hadrian was so affected by this that he had Antonius deified and a cult dedicated to his worship spread across the empire. So now you even see this, that even their emperors, their leaders, would perform and do such vile acts. Why do you think America's pushing so hard for all this stuff? Because who's running this land? These same people, the leaders participate in these acts. So if you got the top of the top of the government doing these things, who? what do you think is going to do? It trickles right down. Then it goes to, you know, the, the damn governor of the state, from the governor of the state to the mayor of the city, from the mayor of the city down into uh, your regular bus driver who, who you call him Bob. And Bob is now taking kids. Instead of school, he do a little detour. That This is what's going on with these people. And what happened, it also said that it affected this man so bad that he had he created a cult out of it. Now, doesn't that sound a little familiar to Alexander the Greek's situation? Alexander the Greek was sleeping with his own cousin. When he actually when he went and told his cousin that he was gonna marry a woman for political reasons, what did his cousin do? His cousin went and committed suicide because he was affected that he didn't have his cousin no more to sleep with. That's the madness of these people. That's the disgusting, vile behavior of these people. And they push this within the religions of our people. Now, let's keep going down. I hey, so lucky. I got a quick precept. Khan. Khan. And that's, you know, that's powerful with the brother going into because, like he said, it ain't nothing new under the sun. Everything that was going on during the Greco-Roman Empire is happening in America right now. Because the same people that rule America was ruling back then, right? America is just, you know, an extension of the Greco-Roman Empire. And they show it to you, you know, when you look at all these statues, like every time we go to, you know, Washington, D.C., mm. all you see, you know, down there in D.C. is these Greek and Roman statues. And you got, you know, little boys butt naked sitting on grown men's laps. <laughs> so what is that showing you, right? I mean, this is the same thing all over again, right? So this is, uh, I'm going to get um, the rest of Esther and the Apocrypha. I'm going to get uh, chapter 14, verse 15, right? It's one of my favorite precepts. It says, thou knowest all things, O Lord. Thou knowest that I hate the glory of the unrighteous, right? So we hate the glory of the unrighteous, right? Because that's what America glorifies, right? America glorifies all type of immoral activity, right? Like, what's the point of, of having a whole month that's dedicated? Well, not even a whole month, because when you when you do the research, I believe they said that damn near half the half of the year is over 165 days or something like that that's dedicated to gay pride. So it's, it's, it's even beyond Gay Pride Month. They got, you know, other days in the year that's, you know, dedicated to Gay Pride, right? But you got to think about it, like the brother saying, like, this is an agenda, right? They're trying to push this because what's the purpose of that? Like, if you was going to give gay people rights, that's cool. Like, all right, give them their rights and, you know, let them do what they do. But why, why, do you, why, why they got to have their own parade? Right. Why they got to be, you know, on commercials and why they got to be on cartoons and why they got to teach this to your kids in school? Like, what's the point of that? I mean, that go to show you that they're trying to push this agenda. And a lot of our people, you know, 
they just lack a days cool, right? So it says, <clears throat> Oh Lord, thou knowest that I hate the glory of the unrighteous and abhor the bed of the uncircumcised and of all the heathen, right? Because when you look at the, the bed of the uncircumcised, you see all the you know all the wicked acts that they you know promote, right? I mean the brother exposing them. Like look at all these, you know, the works of the heathens, right? All type of pedophilia. All type of homosexuality. I mean, this is, you know, this is disgusting. And, you know, this type of stuff, you know, vexed the spirit, you know, of the servants of the Lord, right? And like the brother said, we can't wait for this place to be destroyed because, hey, this is disgusting, right? <clears throat> but that's all I had on that. Hey, uh, hey, hey Salaki, real quick. Hey, when the cat had mentioned about how they kind of push it in commercials and everything, if you pay attention to those commercials, um, you'll see it's a lot of Israelites that they're putting out there as being homosexual. When you mm -hmm. see those those commercials, it's it's wild. Uh, it's wild. That's that's all I had though. Not common. And both of y'all brothers have made mighty points, and you know, you see just how the brother read it out, in Esther. You know. The wicked works of the heathen and that's what these people are um i'm gonna read this last little sentence and then we're gonna go down to the other paragraph it says right here as well as hadrian we hear of emperor titus keeping a great number of male concubines and that nero married a young man whom he then had castrated to preserve his youthful quality so now we even get the men that ransacked jerusalem they being homosexuals, these men being wicked and evil. Emperor Titus and Nero were wicked as men. We know that. We know the works that they did against our people by slaughtering our people, destroying our, our you know, our city, destroying our temple. And now look at the more wicked acts of them, the behind the scenes, behind the curtains. Here they are with male concubines. With, with marrying young men and saying it says that he castrated that man to preserve his youthful qualities what does that mean that is my question just because you castrated him doesn't mean when he hits 52 he's not going to look like a 52 year old that's the wickedness of these people it makes and that is why we as so-called black hispanics and Asians, we got to stop trusting these people we have to stop uh, 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 eating up the ideologies. Stop eating up the uh, the lies that they give to us because it's killing us and it's affecting us. Let's uh, go down to the next uh, paragraph. Baba Kasha. So, um, yeah, right here, like I've been said, your kids should have been up. I'm going to read this right here. The act of penetrative sex between males was inexplicably linked with the active man's dominance and prowess. It was regarded as scandalous and humiliating for men to be the passive partner. So just like how it was with the Egyptians, because the Greco's Roman Empire, they learned a lot of things from Egypt. Egypt had the same exact custom. You could have two men sleep with each other. If the man was the receiver, he was viewed as weak and docile. But if the man was the giver, he's the man. He's strong. You know, he's dominant. No, that's gay. That's not dominant. That's gay. Straight up and down. I don't care if you're the one saying you're the one doing the penetrating or you're the one doing the taking. Either way, you, you both have committed an abomination. That is why also the most I told the Israelites leaving e uh, out of Egypt don't do what they do. Don't follow the customs after them because they do things like that. And look at what the Edomites do. The same thing. If you're the giver, you're a man, you're powerful. But if you're a receiver, oh, you're weak. No, you are both abominable men. You both must be put to death for your wickedness. So it says right here, um, even Julius Caesar was accused by political opponents in the late 50, early 40s BC to have engaged in a sexual relationship with King Nechemes the fourth of Bithria when he had been a guest at the Bithynian, uh, Bithyan court in 80 BC. So now you even got men like 
Julius Caesar. So it says, while it is unclear as to whether this claim is true, Caesar was rumored to have been the passive sexual partner, earning him the title, the Queen of Bithynia from his enemies, demonstrating the relationship between passivity and femininity, as well as the emasculatory effects that being the recipient of homosexual sex entailed. So now they're saying, oh, it could be a rumor that even Caesar was getting down like that. But I wouldn't put it past them. These are the Romans. These are what they, you know, these are what these people do. These are the vile, disgusting acts that they perform. Let's go down to the uh, next paragraph. Art. Here we go. Um, Khan. Khan. It says, in summary, homosexuality in ancient Rome was as much about communications of power and status than it was about attraction and emotion. And it's so crazy because, you know, in this, you know, the next class that I'm going to do, I'm going to do it on the celebrities, right? All these people that they push in our face. And that same thing that it just said that it's more about power and status, mm -hmm. right? How many of these dudes that, that P. Diddy, you know, thrash through, right? To, to give them the promise of making them famous, right? How many of these, you know, elites have, have you know, like, you get you get the point, but it's mostly about power and dominance, right? Over anything. Um, and you know they think they they're doing the right thing, but in reality they're not. Uh, communications of power and status than it was about attraction and emotion, with sex as a vehicle to exercise privilege and dominance. The civil freedoms of a Roman citizen allowed him to engage in such relations with any man lower in society than him, whilst demonstrating his virility and ability to conquer others. It translates so directly to displays of power that Roman men were even known to orally rape their rivals to express their superiority over them whilst ridiculing the victim. Although laws were put in place to prosecute the offender and protect the status of the victim, the case of Caesar shows elite men were targets for slander from others for being a passive partner, and it could damage a man's political reputation. You see, that? you see that? That's madness. So these men care more about political reputation, status, uh, uh, wealth, and um, power over actually saying, I'm going to be a man of the Lord. Or, I'm going to be a man and have some integrity to myself. I'm not going to sleep with another man. No, they they care more about their, their damn political reputation. And he talked about, this is, the, this is how you know this is the wickedness of the damn white man. It talks about that laws were put in place to prosecute the offenders and protect the status of the victim. How long did it take for those laws to be put in place? So you mean to tell me you had these Roman men orally raping other men? And y'all mean to tell me that America, which is an extension of Greco-Roman, that this is the land that God blessed? Look at the map. That's wicked. That's disgusting as behavior for anybody sit up here and try to now justify that. You have to be just as wicked, if not worse. And that is why we say to our people, the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Natives, you cannot be sitting here joining hand in hand with these people because you don't understand the, the, the lengths that these people will go to push their wickedness, to push it upon you and your communities. Because if, let's say, they really wanted to go back to doing this again, they will do it in a heartbeat like that. And snap of fingers, they'll go right back to doing that. They just, you know what, hey, write a new law. If you're orally raped, nothing could happen to you. You're all good, hey. Hey, you know what? They'll, they'll say to the victim, uh, you were just there at the wrong time. That's the madness of, of this place. And this is what their ancestors were doing. These were things that the Greco-Romans were doing. 
That is why we advocate so hard for the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Natives to leave the ideologies behind of America, to follow the one true God, Yahweh, to understand that your Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shad, has a, has a direct message for you. And that message is to repent and keep the commandments so that you can be delivered out of this place, so that you can actually understand what it means to be a righteous and powerful holy nation. But instead, our people want to sit up here and follow all these things. Our people want to sit up here and actually advocate for Christianity, advocating for the Romans and the Greek Grecians. Now we're going to get another uh, blog. Um, can you pull up the other one I sent you with the... Uh, uh, it's called the Muse. It was the one that I sent, Project Muse, the sexual abuse of black men under Amer uh, yeah, under America. Now we're gonna get into it. Some more things, because these are the acts that they were doing with each other, right? And they were doing it to our people, because our people were in Greek, uh, Greece, and in Rome. That is why when, you know, Paul came around and he was writing all these letters, he was writing them so our people could clean themselves up so that they can repent from these lifestyles that they were living under the Grecians and under the Romans so that they can understand who the Amashiach really is, who he's for, so that they have a chance to come back to that grace. So they have a chance to actually say, I'm going to change my life around. And now I'm going to serve the most high God, Yahweh. Uh, you know, our brothers and sisters during those times were serving Apollo, Jupiter, Venus, uh, you know, Aphrodite, all types of, of vain gods. Being under the influence of these people and being under the influence of said people, you know, they were participating in said acts. So now let's get into it with how they were really treating us here now in the Americas. So um, we could start with, uh, let's go to, um, I was going to say, I wanted to go to the second paragraph. Scholars? Khan, and then just go down to where it says uh, physical, right there, where you see the number four. Khan. Khan, phys yep. Okay. Uh, the article is The Sexual Abuse of Black Men Under American Slavery. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to read this first line real quick. It says, in 1787, an enslaved man in Maryland raped a free black woman. The story comes to us from the female victim in the incident. Okay, I'm going to scroll down. Scholars have suggested that rape can serve as a metaphor for enslavement thus applying to both men and women who were enslaved. Mm -hmm. uh, as Aaliyah, the vulnerability, uh, argues, uh, the vulnerability of all enslaved black persons to nearly every conceivable violation produced a collective rape subjectivity. Con, because we also understand that in order for us to still be here, they would force the man you know our forefathers to sleep with these women and these women would be their own mothers sisters and these brothers would be blindfolded and if they weren't able to matter of fact go back up it tells you literally in that same first uh uh sentence that you read what they told um what they told the brother to do huh it says um <clears throat> one white man william holland had her pull up her clothes and uh, pull her up close and lie down. Uh, he then called a Negro manslave and ordered him to pull down his britches and get upon the said Amwood and to be, be great with her. Uh, a fourth individual in this horrific scene, a white man named John Pettigrew, operating with Holland, pointed a pistol at the unnamed enslaved man and Elizabeth Amwood, all the while, Holland taunted them both, asking if it was in and if it was sweet. I see that. Mm -mm -mm. See that? That's 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 Esau for you. That's how you know that these people 
their vein, man, to sit there. And then you're what, mind you, the act of sex is something sacred between a man and a woman, right? It's a marriage pact. Nobody's supposed to be sitting there watching you, but you got dirty ass Esau sitting there watching the brother. They forced the brother to sleep with this woman, telling him, yeah, you better do this. Because they, if not, what are they going to do? They're going to blow his brains out. They got a pistol pointed at the brother, and he's forced to now, and he may not have wanted to do that. He's like, nah, I don't know this lady like that. They probably took the brother, you, you don't know, they probably took the brother out the shed. Maybe he was working, and they just dragged him. Come here. Beat the brother a couple of times, put a blindfold on him, and then tell him, oh, this is what you need to do. That's the madness and wickedness of this place. So now let's read uh, where, where it says right there with the physical sexual abuse. Bob Kishan. Oh, God. Uh, physical. Number four, right? Khan. Khan. Uh, physical sexual abuse of women and girls under slavery ranged from acts of pun punishment to expressions of desire and from forms of forced reproduction to systems of concubinage. Mm -hmm. Slavery violated the masculinity of black men who were denied the ability to protect vulnerable female dependents. According to Deborah Gray White, those who tried to protect their spouses were themselves abused. The emasculating uh, psychic toll, White further argued, could have led men to eschew monogamy or resist marriage altogether. Dang. Mm -hmm. Now, this next <laughs> joint right here. Yo, Salakia, real quick. That in itself is, is crazy. Right, because when you go, you know, when, when, you know, and and this is just speaking as a man, right? But to get uh, one of our brothers, you know, who are still in the world, to settle down and, you know, want to be with that woman that they're trying to court, you know, instead of courting the whole block of women or you know, courting a whole county of women or whatever, is in itself uh extremely hard right and, and, and you know you can never understand that a lot of this is all uh, um behavior that has been embedded in us as a people you know and it, it's yeah it's pretty crazy hey salaki that's uh psychological warfare I right that's exactly what i was thinking about like They've been doing this for hundreds of thousands of years, right? And then all right. it's, all it's done is embed in our spirits. Right, right. right? Generation to, after generation. Right. Exactly. To be a whore, right? To 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 not just wanna, you know, yeah, it's crazy. And uh now, yeah, if we could read this uh the second the next one. Uh huh. Okay, Khan. It says the rape of Elizabeth Amwood reveals that black manhood under slavery was also violated in other ways that are less easily spoken of then and now, namely the sexual exploitation of enslaved men. The historical sexual assault of men and boys is well known, if mostly unarticulated. The scholarship on early America shows us numerous instances of rape and sexual assault of men and boys. And it still happens in Hollywood and all over. Yep. Ramon Gutierrez has argued that individuals of the Native American third sex or beardishes were frequently prisoners of war used for sex and emasculated. We also know through the handful of extant sodomy cases that males have been have been so abused. The 17th century Connecticut gentleman, Nicholas Sensium, for example, sexually preyed on his male servants. Virtually all of the cases of sodomy that came to the courts in early America involved individuals 
violating status boundaries, instructors on students, masters on servants, none involved peers. You see that? And now we're going to get into this third paragraph, right? And just and with this third paragraph, it's really going to let you know. And just like how we say who the children of Israel are, right? Let's see what with this uh, third paragraph. It says, in, in the context of slavery, literary scholars have shown that sexual abuse of men was part of the Spanish slave system in Cuba. Mm -hmm. Robert Robert Ellis argues that the account of former slave Juan Francisco Manzano has commonly been regarded as a searing indictment of a physical mistreatment of slaves, but can also be read as a as silent testimony to a kind of abuse largely unacknowledged by historians of slavery and critics of slave narratives, the sexual violation of male slaves. As Ellis points out, the topic has largely gone. Uh, as Ellis, as Ellis points out, the topic has largely gone unexplored for a wide variety of reasons, including the obvious barrier of the historical record in that male victims of slave rape left behind no biological record in the form of offspring as well as the prevalent homophobia in traditional Latin American societies, which would have prevented men from telling their stories given that male sexual passivity was particularly stigmatized insofar as it was seen as entailing a loss of masculinity. You That's see great. that? And what did it name? What were the three groups of people that got raped by white men in there? It named so-called blacks, you got so-called Hispanics and so-called Native Americans. Don't we say, we preach all the time that these three groups make up the children of Israel. We now just read in this article, and mind you, th these articles that we're pulling up are from colleges. These are EDU sites. So it's not like we're just pulling them out of nowhere. In this article, you have the same three groups who we say are the children of Israel we see them that they are being raped, sexually assaulted by the Idumians. So now, what is it that we have to do as a people? We got to separate from these people. And what is it that we have to do is go back to our culture, go back to understanding who we truly are. Because them doing all these vile things to us has destroyed our minds. Hence why now, 2024, you will have in those three communities, so many of our young men now want to turn that leaf talking about yeah he's gay or you have their mothers or people in their families pushing them and helping them yeah you can you can do it. it's okay when when reality they're supposed to be correcting that child but instead because our minds have already been destroyed due to all the exploitations that they've done on us for the past 400 years Come 2024 now, it, it, we just don't care no more. Ah, do what you want. But it's not do what you want. What does the scripture say? Um, and, uh, go ahead, Doc. Hey, so, I give, so look, and it's crazy because it's not only that. It's also, uh, oh, you know, the narrative that's being pushed in the world, right? Oh, mm -hmm. my child is different. You know, my child, uh, uh, you know, we're talking about like a, a 9, 10, 11 year old who thinks they're a homosexual. Right? But right. when you confront the parent about it, it starts becoming, oh, well, my child is different. Or, oh, that's the way God made him, you know, type exactly. stuff. Yeah, I mean, and, and I really hate, I, I will say I hate, and I will use that word strongly. I hate that they will say, oh, they will use that as an excuse. Oh, well, my child believes this. Hey, when I was a kid, I used to believe I was Spider-Man. Was I Spider-Man, damn it? My dad would walk in. I'm over here jumping off my bed trying to do all this. Did he tell me, son, you're Spider-Man? Hell no. He, he pulled your ass down. He whooped your ass. Yeah. <laughs> he pulled me off the bed, whooped my ass, said, bro, stop jumping on your bed. 
But America has become so passive, so evil that, oh, well, my child believes this. My child believes that. What you're supposed to do is grab that child, right? And tell them, no, you're not that. This is who you are. Whether, you know, you be a boy or girl. But nope, now it's, oh, tu sabes, you, have, you know what? Little Timmy, that's right. You, you're not Timmy no more. You feel like Bethany? Well, you'll be a Bethany. No, you're supposed to grab little Timmy and throw him off the damn roof and pile drive him and stuff and drop an elbow on him and tell him, you Timmy. That's what you're supposed to do. The Bible says you're supposed to not spare the rod from your child. That you're supposed to correct your child. But America has become so passive, so soft, because obviously the Idumians are running it. I, the Idumians are coming over here and put, implementing all these uh, laws. Well, now, if you try to discipline the child, you may go to jail. That's how you know these people are anti-God. That's how you know these people don't really believe in the Bible. So let's um get, um if somebody could pull me up, Hebrews 12 and 16, Babkasha. And again, we're going to go into just how we can tell that these people are wicked. We've already seen the proof. We're already looking at it. These people are wicked. Let's go back to the scriptures now. Because you got to, you know, you have to use both. You got to use, you got to use the history. You got to use, um, you know, the Bible. You got to go into, uh, uh, you know, pottery. Mm. You got to go into so theology. Like, hey, Kazai, you got something, Mark? Con, con. Oh, la, I was just saying, um, basically, hey, raising my hand. Hey, over there? <laughs> I can read I can read uh that Hebrews 12 and 16 whenever you're ready. Uh. Okay, Khan. So yeah, you go into the history, you go into the archaeology. Now you go into the Bible too. You gotta use it all. You gotta use all your resources, the Bible, archaeology, pottery, history, to what? Make everything congeal and coagulate and make everything make sense. We go. When you read in the Bible about Esau being a wicked man, what do you have to do? You got to go into history. You got you read in the Bible about Esau, how he, you know, destroys the earth. It talks about a man that destroys the earth. Well, go into history. Who runs around destroying the earth? It ain't us. So-called blacks, Hispanics and natives. We don't have the money and resources to build planes. So they could drop chemicals all over and pollute the air. We don't have the money and resources for atomic bombs to destroy and wipe out land, uh, whole countries. We don't have the money or resources to be out here polluting water and sitting in a lab. Show me a, 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 a so-called Puerto Rican guy with mad money in a lab throwing all types of chemicals in the in water. We're not doing that. So that's why you got to use all these resources. So you can understand what you're actually reading in the scriptures because people will tell us, oh, you know, I'm having a hard time reading. I don't understand what's going on. I'll read some things and I'm stuck. Well, you know why you're stuck? Because you're not following the commandments, because you're not actually understanding who you are. Once you find out who you are and your God and you do what your God is telling you to do, he will give you the spirit of understanding. He will give you the uh, spirit of discernment so that when you go into the nationalities of certain people, you go, okay, I know who Esau is. Oh, okay, I know who Moab is. So now we got to keep on reading. And guess what? Now we see who Esau is. And you see all throughout the scriptures of how about how they're wicked. And Hebrews right here, 12 and 16, tells you also how wicked they are. So uh, if you got that out, you can read it, Babkasha. John, this is Hebrews 12 and 16. It says, lest there be any fornicator or mm -hmm. profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. You see that? Esau is so profane. He's a fornicator. It, it, Esau is also a murderer. Esau is a thief. It could have said any other attribute about him. But the first thing it says is a fornicator. Now, fornication is unlawful sexual acts. Fornication uh, contrary to popular belief, is not a young single male and a young single woman having sex before quote unquote marriage. That was what the Catholics instilled, so that when you think 
that you know a young single man and a young single woman have sex oh that that's not fornication no the catholics push that ideology so that they can go and grab your little son and take him to the back room for confessions that's what the catholics did because nowhere in the scriptures do we see that ever being labeled as fornication we see jacob he takes his wife to the tents we see uh the brother tobias uh toba he takes though the, the uh, he takes his sister to the tent into the marriage chamber they do the do they're married that's not fornication fornication in hebrew is unlawful and what is unlawful man on man man with child man with animal man with a uh, uh, dead uh, dead bodies same thing for the women so that is the first quality of esau and it says less so it's saying don't 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 be like this person lest there be any fornicator or profane person as esau so it's saying he's a fornicator and profane because what is he doing in order to push pedestrian you have to be profane vile wicked in order for you to uh push um all these lgbt and all this extra stuff you have to be profane you have to be a fornicator you have to be wicked and evil in order to push these agendas con. and then you it's a lot here check out that nlt con make sure that no one is immoral or godless like esau con and that's who esau is he's immoral and godless because if you talk to any other race of people right let's say you go up to uh an ishmaelite and ask him about homosexuality that ishmaelite might might want to chop your head off go to one of these hamite countries that don't practice that those hamite countries they might want to chop your head off you go to moab right even moab they'll be iffy about it because you see even in their history they've done the practices of homosexuality but for the most part you see some of them they'll be like nah we don't do that right then you go to esau and go what do you think about homosexual? Oh man, Esau start rubbing his hands together like he Birdman. He just starts getting it's like firing pins. Just dude, he starts having all types of ideas. Mm -mm. Remember that? Uh, remember that Edomite that that we just finished dealing with? Man, what did he say about homosexuality? He said, "I have nothing against it. I'm okay right. with it." Right. You see that? Uh, of course, they'll say something like that because they're godless. They're immoral. So they don't have actual reasoning to say, oh, you know what? It's actually wrong. Instead, they'll advocate for it. They'll push for it. And that's the madness of Esau. And then what does Esau do? He takes it to our people and he sets up these community leaders. We never voted for them. We never advocated for the, the Kirk Franklins and the T.D. Jakes and all these uh uh you know celebs and all them to be in the status that they're in we didn't they never came to us of the so-called black and brown community of blacks hispanics and natives and said okay here's 50 of us y'all choose on who y'all want to be leaders no these people were appointed and set up by the idumians so now let's get into a uh, if somebody could grab me um Romans 1 and 18 and 29. We'll read 18 through 29, Babaksha. And um, Mahar, you'll start uh, pulling up them YouTube videos. Um, let me see which one. So it'll be, you'll pull up the, um, it'll be one, two, three, four. Uh, so yeah, we'll do the we'll do five, six. Okay. So yeah, we'll do six of them. We'll do the six YouTube videos. And then there's two more after uh the article of the CDC, and we can do those as well. So we'll do pretty much all the YouTube videos right now. And then we'll get into the other articles. Bob Kasha. So you want the videos first? Con, con. 
So we got a man of renowned high stature in the so-called black, Hispanic, and native community. I've never viewed this man as renowned or high stature. Um, even before the truth, I never cared or knew who Kirk Franklin was. Um, but a lot of our people, they love this man. They hold him in high regards. Well, this is your your man of high regards. Um, he's supposed to be a, what is he, a, a pastor, right? Kirk Franklin, a Christian singer, pastor. I don't know. I know he's well regarded in the Christian community. I, I just know that. And I, I know he's a leader. He's a community leader in the Christian community for so-called black people. Well, let's see what this man is doing as a uh, so-called Christian man. So you don't have to have the music, the volume up. It's all good. So we see him, he's dancing and they're singing Christian music. So I built my... I mean, what is Tight that? Jeans and high heels. What'd you say, Ock? Tight jeans and high heels. You, you see that? What in the F? Because I want to say it, but I'm not going to say it. What in the F is this dude wearing? Why is he dancing like that? This is supposed to be a high renowned Christian man in the so called black community, right? And yet this dude. Is dressed like it's the 1980s Michael Jackson music video. This man is wearing tight pants. He got he got tight clothing on. He touched the brother earlier too in the video. He I, I don't know what he did, but he like touched them on the head. So you got him. He's out here touching brothers. He got tight clothing on. He got heels on. But yeah, hey, I, I don't know people. what's worse, Salaki. I don't know what's worse, mm -hmm. the homosexuality or the fact that they're doing an Easter service. And right, and this is supposed to be a, an Easter service. And yet you see this man having so much effem like just watching that video, I sensed nothing and I saw nothing but straight effeminity off of him. I saw nothing but straight sodomite energy coming off that man. I would never look at a man just like that and say, that's a godly man. That's a man who girds up his loin, who cries aloud, who goes out there on the highways and byways, and, you know, and actually teaches his people the truth. I, I, I don't see that. What I see right there is a, a is, you know, a sodomite. I see a man that 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 is willing to do whatever it takes in order for him to get that power. Now let's go into the other one, Bob Kasha. And a lot of our people, they can get offended. They can get mad and say, no, not my dear Kirk Franklin, not him. Well, yeah, him. Because the brother, look, he keeps wearing all this tight clothing. What is up with the tight clothing? Does the Is he trying to show off his physique? Is that what he's trying to do? What 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 is going on? Let's see what he does in this video. What was the brother doing backing it up on the sister like that? The man was backing it up on the sister. Wh why? What was the purpose of that? What is the reasoning behind it? He actually put his hands on his knees and started backing it up too. You see that? 
And these are supposed to be the high leaders of our people. These are supposed to be the leaders and the people and you know the people that we're supposed to look up to. So me as a young man, as a so-called uh, you know, Hispanic man, viewing my so-called black brother, right, as the leader that he's supposed to be, and I see that, what does that tell me? What does that tell the others? Now being in the truth, I know what that tells me. The brother's completely gone off. He's wicked as hell. But as for the others that are out in the world, they view that and say, you know what? If he's if he could do it, I can too. Because he's uh, a man of God. Hey, Salaki. Go ahead, Doc. He's also somebody that people will look to to quote unquote teach people about salvation. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? It's like if they they're trying to get salvation from a dude like that who's dressing in heels and tight pants and backing it up on oh, man yo it's crazy mm -hmm. and um con and that it's like that one preset that talks about when christ come back he's gonna slay those in strange apparel you know that's strange apparel for a man to be in tight clothing and in heels it's strange apparel for be for our sisters to be having hats on and jeans and and, you know, trying to look like a dude. That's strange apparel. The woman's supposed to dress how she's supposed to dress. The man's supposed to dress how he's supposed to dress. That is why when you go to the stores and clothing sections, it says men's department, women's department. But now you got our people want to do this, all this cross-dressing stuff. That goes back into the homosexuality. That goes back into the wickedness of, you know, certain people and their practices. And now you got this dude who's supposed to be a high renowned church leader, singer, and he's put he's over here backing it up. I thought this is supposed to be a Christian man doing God's work. Show me in the scriptures or show me where any of the our forefathers, right? The ancient Israelites, the men backing it up with tight clothing on. That's madness. You got the other one up. The other uh, video. A question coming in from uh, Black One Eighty Five in our in our uh, digital community said, "Do you do you think I'm assuming uh, LGBT community in the Black Church can coexist?" Absolutely. I, I, let me push that question because that that's sort of an obvious. Yes, church ain't turning nobody away. How should the Black Church and LGBT? You see that. Dang, now, he said the church ain't turning nobody away, and that's the problem. You see that? You see that? So this is T.D. Jakes, another man of high stature, renown, of, um, you know, high status in the so-called black community, in the so-called black Christian church community, right? And yet his answer is absolutely to the question, if homosexuals in the black church can coexist and he says absolutely but show me in the scriptures where the israelites coexisted with homosexuals the most high tells you that you have to purge out iniquities so if you got a murderer running through your community you got to get rid of him if you got a if you got a thief running through the community you judge him but guess what he doesn't get purged out for it he has to pay you know that that back plus a portion as well. So there's all, all these laws and regulations on how we're supposed to deal with certain things. But when it comes to homosexuality, you don't let it go by. You don't just say, yeah, we coexist. You have to be put to death for that. It's an abomination. And yet this man who's supposed to be a God-fearing man, he teaches millions of people. I don't know how much T.D. Jake's uh, net worth is, but he got enough money to be hanging out with high celebs. He got enough money to be out here in a mega church. And yet he's up here advocating and saying, yeah, absolutely. The black church can actually sit out here and coexist with homosexuals. That's madness. So now what does that do once again to our people? Now it says, you know what? We can do it. We can be in there and we could be a gay bishop. We could be a gay servant of the Lord. Show me a gay servant of the Lord in the Bible. Show me one. 
you will never find a servant who was serving Yahweh, who was a follower of Christ and sitting out here being a, a homosexual. But yet these so-called community leaders, these so-called high renowned men want to sit up here and advocate for it. that's madness. That's wickedness. And that's why this man, this same man, ends up saying some real crazy suspect stuff in the next video. And I will say something, too. That video that's coming up after this one, where he said that real suspect stuff. I watched the entire sermon because I said I have to get the context of what's going on. In the entire sermon, he had nothing to go with what he says in that video. It just comes out of nowhere. He was talking about Abraham, if I'm correct. He had an underling walk behind him the whole time. So there was a dude behind him. I guess he was supposed to like represent Isaac and he's supposed to be Abraham. And out of nowhere, he ends up saying that crazy, vile, suspect thing. And that's because, hey, you're going to say what's in your heart and your mind, right? And we know what's in this man's mind. If he's allowed, if he's saying this, he's saying it's cool for the so-called black church and homosexuals to coexist, then we know what type of stuff this man gets into. You can keep uh, playing the video or you can go into the other one. Not. Khan, I was just going to say, this is also the same pastor who said that David and Jonathan were lovers. Wow. See, I didn't even know that. He said that? Oh, yeah. Wow. Bro, bro, you see that? And then this is why the community looks at us in the way that they do, because when we hear things like that, y'all don't understand the anger and frustration. It, 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 you know, it brings us onto us, brothers and sisters that are in the truth. If I was in T.D. Jakes' face, the moment he says something like that, I'm sorry, but I don't know what I would have done. Uh, let's just say T.D. Jakes definitely would have been catching mean elbows and, and hooks to the face. For him to say something so disgusting like that, so blasphemous, I would, I would tell him over and over again, show me in the scriptures. And if he couldn't answer it but keep saying it, yeah, he would have caught uppercuts, mean uppercuts and, and knees to the face. I would have thrown him in the Muay Thai plum, and I would have thrown mad knees to his face. Damn. I'm telling you. And that right there is why then people look at us and be like, oh, y'all are angry. Yeah, we're angry because we have to deal with this madness. How dare you say that King David was a homosexual? How dare you say that Jonathan was a homosexual? That's blasphemous unto the Most High. That's a blasphemy unto our forefathers. And that's why he says this suspect stuff in the next video. Let's go ahead and uh, pull that next joint up. I think it's going to be that. Which one? The uh, pastor of Myrtle? No, it's pastor. the other two, Jake's one. It should be the one right under that one. Uh, it's the one right before the Muse document. Hold on, no, no, it's not that one. It should be the one before Salakia. No, damn it, what is it? I think you sent me the same one twice, the Kirk Franklin twerk. Uh, yeah, okay, I see what happened. You want me to search it up, or you think it may be in the, the next one? Let me see the next ones. Just type in, just type in, uh, go, you're on YouTube, right? Yeah, con. Just type in uh TD Jake swallowed up. That was good. <laughs> because if he's saying things like this, it it doesn't obviously then why he's gonna say this out of line, wild, out of pocket ass sentence that he said. And like I said, I watched the entire sermon. I was at work, I was like, you know what? I mean, because the clip came out. The clip came out. And I was like, I was like, that's crazy. I was like, that's crazy, right? I was like, yo, that's crazy that he would say that. I was like, but let me watch the whole sermon to see if there's a if there was a reasoning 
why he says this. I'm like, there's got to be something. Hey, maybe he's trying to put it two together with a lesson. I watched that whole sermon. It's like an hour and something. And he said that. And even when he when I listened to the video, the whole sermon, when he says this, I was still thrown off. I was like, there was no reason for you to say this in what you were talking about. There was no correlation of him talking about being swallowed up with his lesson. But let's go ahead and play this video, bro. Been swallowed up. Have you ever been swallowed up? Have you gone through a time of swallowing where everything was overwhelmed? Been swallowed up. Have you ever been swallowed up? Have you gone through a time of swallowing where everything? I mean, what in what context? In what sense do you use those words? And you listen to the whole video, the part where he's like, I don't know what it was. You could see maybe the brother was reminiscing, but he's like, oh, I would have. And then he goes into, I would have been swallowed up. Like, what? are you over there reminiscing about something? Are you over here mesmerizing about something you had going on? What is going on with you in your sick mind? For you to be on the pulpit, on the stage, and start talking about being swallowed up. What context were you trying to use that? We know the context of him trying to advocate then for this. Uh, uh, you know, maybe he is behind the scenes, uh, a, a down low man. If you're pushing for homosexuality, if you're going to say that King David and that Jonathan were lovers, and then now you out here talking about being swallowed up in the middle of a sermon that had nothing to do with the sermon. Maybe you are a, a, a man who's been swallowed up by other men. Who knows? Hey, I but, think maybe is a little too weak. I think we need something maybe. stronger. <laughs> right. This man is out here talking about being swallowed up in the middle of his lessons, in the middle of his sermon, with no context to the sermon. And that is why um, now we can grab that in Romans uh, 1, and we, I think we can start at uh, 24. Let me see. Con, con, we can start at, we can start at uh, 24. This is the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 24. It says, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through their through the lust of their own hearts to mm -hmm. dishonor their own bodies between themselves who mm -hmm. the truth of yahweh into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever amen for this cause god gave them up unto vile affection for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Which and is likewise, against, against nature. You see that? Go ahead and we'll say what you were going to say. Art. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned mm -hmm. in their lust one toward another. Men with men worked that which is unseemly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, you keep reading, Art. Uh, uh, it says, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Con, so when you go up and read from verse 18 all the way down, it talks about those in that power of you know being able to spread the word right but instead it says that they so they hold it now when you look at it it's talking about uh, that hold to suppress so they're suppressing the word and because they don't actually want to do what the most high commanded he says you know what fine then i'm gonna give you over to your lust and desires and look at what happened you see it talks about the women leaving the natural use that the men burned in lust men with men Working what is unseemly. What is unseemly? Man with man, because you cannot bear a child. A woman and woman cannot bear a child. 
That is why it is unseemly. Uh, go back up, Bot. Uh, Salakia. So yeah, and it talks and it says right there in twenty four, God gave them unto uncleanness through the lust of their heart. It's unclean. It's a disgusting thing. It says to dishonor them own bodies between themselves. Your body is a temple, right? And the Most High said, "Is if you defile your temple, He will destroy you." That's um 1 Corinthians three and seventeen, right? If you defile your temple, He will destroy you. How do you defile your temple? By smoking, by marking it up, by doing various drugs, or by being a homosexual. You defile your temple, and the Most High will destroy you. And then we see in Romans right here, right. Where it says that in receiving them in verse 27, that recompense of their errors, which was meat. What's the recompense of the errors, which was meat? The so-called black Hispanic and native man out here catching all types of uh, diseases and infirmaries because they want to live that lifestyle. Anytime you see a man, Edomite, whatever nation he be, when they do those practices, they end up catching diseases. Why? Because it's unnatural. It's unclean. That is why then you have so many so-called black Hispanics and natives with all types of diseases out here. Because they want to be walking in a lifestyle in a in a uh you know a sexual preference, right? That is not natural. That is not what the most high ordained you to do. The most high God ordained the children of Israel for the men to be with women for the women to be with men to reproduce to have families so that they can keep growing as a nation but our people want to sit up here and actually do the contrary because they live in this society in this country that pushes for the nastiness of homosexuality so now they set up these leaders and look at the leaders themselves they've been given over to reprobate minds They've been given over to the lust of their heart. So now you see Kirk Franklin and T.D. Jakes out here doing whatever. I'm pretty sure if brothers that went to church back in the, uh, you know, days or whatever. They, I mean, of course, there was still wickedness going on. But were they seeing that? Back in the I don't know, 50s, 60s, 70s, were they seeing that? A dude up there trying to preach... Know. Right, hey, that, that thing was still taboo back then. Right, it was taboo, and then out of nowhere, this big shift just comes out of nowhere. Now it's you gotta accept these people, you gotta love these people. But yeah, America hasn't accepted us. We gotta accept these people who just out of nowhere pop up. Right, all of a sudden they get all these rights. All of a sudden they get all these privileges. Meanwhile, we still got a slave nine to five. We still get pulled over and gunned down by the police. We still get uh, 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 reprimanded, you know, for whatever little thing we do. We don't get no rights, but yet these people just come out of nowhere and get to get to have all the rights in the world. That's how you know it's an agenda. That's how you know that these people that are in power are wicked as hell. And they set up these wicked men in our communities to push that onto us. So now when our people want to actually learn what happens, that is why you have so many so-called young uh, black, Hispanic and native men, women, you know, and women that don't go to church. Imagine that you go to a church and you see a damn gump up there shaking his rump. Talking about he's praising God. Damn, not the gump with the rump. The gump with the rump. If I'm not in the truth and I see something like that, I'm not going to believe in the Bible. I'm not believing in God. I'm walking out the church and I'm going to go back to living my folly. What the hell am I going to go to church for when they got sodomites in there trying to talk about they praise the Lord? Carl, I had a verse of precept this. Con, go ahead and bring it out. Right? Con, um, get 2 Timothy 3 and 1. Con. And then, oh, shoot, did you have that up? Um, la, ah, bring, you can bring it out. All right, Con. So I'll just read down to verse 5. But it says, book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, it says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. 
For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, mm -hmm. without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Come. And again, I'm just bringing this out to kind of precept what you were saying. Uh, verse five, heavily precepts, what you were talking about with uh, in the videos that you showed of these pastors having this form of godliness, but denying the power or denying the the power that would make them godly, truly godly. And it says mm -hmm. from such turn away. So from those people, those type of people that we are to stay away from people like that. Con, definitely. And that's a powerful point. We are supposed to stay away from people like that. You know, that's a powerful precept right there that the brother Aniel brought out, you know, mighty brother. That's definitely powerful because these people, they have that form of godliness. Let you go up to Kirk Franklin and ask him about the Bible and he's going to, oh, he's going to get his pastor on, right? He's going to, oh, well, you know, and he's going to go into it. He has a form of a godliness, right? In his own head, though. But is he actually following godliness according to the scriptures? Hell no. Because you're wearing strange apparel, brother. You got an effeminate spirit on you, brother. So you see that going on within our people. Let's um get the the other video uh with um it says the gay pastor of Myrtle Baptist Church. Khan. Well, this Pride Month, we're featuring the faces of those who appear in this year's Portraits of Pride. Tonight, a pastor who is working to open the minds of the faithful by being himself. WBC's Brandon Truitt with the story at the intersection of religion and identity. On any given day, you'll find Pastor Brandon Thomas Crowley in his office under a picture of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., but his real work is done here. You've got to learn how to see your differences as what God wants to use. Behind the pulpit of Myrtle Baptist Church in Newton, the 37-year-old has come a long way from his childhood in Rome, Georgia, but he knew from the beginning he wanted to preach. I've always been very enamored by the black church. I was raised in the black church. Uh, the deacons and leaders of my home churches were like superheroes to me. And I looked up to them. They were my mind. They failed him. I'm going to just say that. The, that black church that he went to, they failed him horribly. Hey, but look, what's even more important or what's even more crazier is the fact that like he said, like they said, it says he was enamored with mm -hmm. black church. Mm -hmm. it, it's not, it's, it's no longer where it's to serve the most high God, right? It becomes a fad. It becomes a, a trend. It becomes, you know, a likeness of something that's holy, but it's not, right? Like you mm -hmm. said, right? They become, you know, attached to the black church but in reality it's not the black church it's the israelite church right but again they're they're attached that that in itself is idolatry con and yeah he says i'm enamored to the not i'm enamored to god i'm enamored to black to the black church so he's enamored to all the shucking and jiving he's right. enamored to, oh oh that's what he like not the actual message, not the actual word that's in the Bible, not the scriptures themselves. No, all he cares about is the showboating, the music, and all the, uh, uh, you know, just, you know, the play offering. That's what he liked. That's what caught him. Not the words of the Most High God. Mm -hmm. This is madness. Jordans. But there's an added layer to this story. Crowley is gay, and he says he always has been. When I would preach on the front porch, I would often do so in my grandmother's high heels. 
Crowley navigated a career of ministry cloaked in one of the most contentious cultural debates of our time, homosexuality at the intersection of religion. He ran into resistance from the beginning. I remember one time there were kids outside, they were throwing rocks at me and laughing at me because I was on the front porch preaching with uh, a robe on, with my grandmother's high heels and a stiff rag that she used for washing dishes. And I ran in the house and I was crying with my Bible and she looked at me and she turned me about face and she said, you go back out there and you continue preaching. His family affirming from the start. You see that? See? You see that? Right? And the the ignorance of the family pushes him further. You see that? And that's why it says in the Bible that there is no wickedness compared to the wickedness of a woman. That grandmother, what she should have done was said, boy, what the hell are you doing with my clothes? Take all that off. You a boy. What you wearing my high heels for? What you wearing my robe for? Go put your clothes back on. That's jeans, boy shorts, sneakers, a tank top. Go go play football. Go get rough. No, instead, what did she do? She went and pushed him. Oh, you keep doing what you're doing, honey. It's all good, sugar. She pushed this wickedness. And guess what? His whole family did so, too. So not only did the so-called black church fail to him, but then his whole family failed him. And now he's behind a pulpit shucking and jiving as a homosexual, a gyrating homo. That's what we see behind the pulpits now. That's madness. Let's, uh, um, if you could get now the uh, YouTube video that's under the article of the CDC. Should be, let me see, it'll be, yeah, it'll be the first one with uh, Pastor Rick Warren. So, yeah, under the, uh, yep, there you go. Are gay people going to hell? No, not because they're gay. Everybody, we go to hell because we choose to reject the grace of God. The so, only way you can go so to hell is if, you're just a, if you're a gay person just, accepts, accepts Christ. Jesus Christ. He's going to heaven. Okay. Well, that's gay. Everybody, we go to hell because we choose to reject the grace of God. The so, only way you can go so to hell gay, is if, you're just a, if you're a gay person just, accepts, accepts Christ. Jesus Christ. He's going to heaven. Okay. Without a doubt. Okay. Fair, fair, yeah. fair, fair enough. Without a doubt. Where is that in the scriptures? I'll tell you how a gay person can. I'll tell you how. If they repent and stop being gay. But instead, these pastors, what do they do? They're pushing it. Oh, you could keep doing what you're doing. That's the smooth, buttery lies. Those are the smooth words. What does it say in, in um about Esau that he has, you know, those words soft as oil, right? I'm paraphrasing, but war is in his heart. So, yeah, they tell you, you could keep being gay. There's no problem with that. You'll make it to heaven. But that's war in his heart because he's telling you to keep breaking God's laws. He's telling you to keep being contrary to the Most High God, Yahweh. And yet, that, that man, he said, without a doubt. You know how bold you got to say that? Without a doubt. That's like me saying without a doubt. Oh, I'm saved already. That's bold to say. And for him to say... Yeah, you could be a homosexual, a transgender, whatever, and you can, all you got to do is have faith in Christ and you go to heaven. Show me that in the scriptures. Uh, uh, what was his name? Rick Warren. Show me that according to the scriptures, not what you feel, not because of how you and your boyfriend get down. Show me what the scripture says about that. You don't see that. Now let's get the uh, other YouTube video that's under that one, Bob Gashaw. It should be when you click it, I think it's titled, um, what does it mean to be? Yep. This is an image of 22 year old Anderson Lee Aldrich. He is the man accused of going on a deadly shooting rampage at a Colorado Springs LGBTQ club last month. Five people were killed in the shooting and 17 others were injured. That suspect is behind bars facing multiple charges. His father says they practice the Mormon faith. A few days prior to the shooting, the Mormon church came out in support of the Respect for Marriage Act 
that would protect gay marriage in the Constitution. Joining me now is Dr. Benjamin Carlton. He is an openly gay pastor and activist. Uh, Benjamin, thank you so much for being here, my brother. Uh, talk to me about what it means to identify as an openly gay pastor. Exactly that. I am a man of faith who believes in the divine, who believes in a creator higher than me. And I so happen to be a same gender loving black man um, in America. None of the things that I had any decision on. I was born black. I was born gay and decided to follow the divine. Now, that's a important analysis and a powerful one, one that I completely agree with in terms of your assessment of yourself and your assessment of the conditions around you. But there are people who will say you can't be both of those things. You can't have a gay pastor. That's not what I, that's what my tradition says. There are uh, traditions of uh, black faith traditions, black Protestant traditions in particular, uh, who would say you can't do that. And, and that there's some kind of contradiction here. What do you say to those people? What a lot of people don't know, especially black people, is that queerness was celebrated in all of our indigenous communities, well, at least most of our indigenous communities before colonialism came and disrupted queer love, disrupted our spirituality. And so we were born into conditions and in messaging and in scripture that tells us that homosexuality is wrong. And most people also don't know that the word homosexual didn't get entered into the Bible until 1946. And so there were people responsible, mainly white people, white men responsible for shaping what we believe now. There is no evidence, right? In the hey, 1960s uh, and even before that, uh, homosexuality I'm sorry. I, I don't think I can deal watching this hey, dude no more. This dude is a bitch. I, I can't deal with this dude no more. He said oh, before colonialism, so before Esau came over here, that the so-called black people, right, the southern kingdomites were practicing and he said celebrating. They were celebrating homosexuality. Where do you find these people? And then he says, oh, that the word homosexual is not implemented in the Bible until we say 19 what? Okay, fine. You don't want to. Uh, hey, word you can't even there. say that because the 1611 has it perfectly fine. Exactly. I was going to say, look, if homosexual is not the word, right, for him and people that think like him. I right, then let's go back to Leviticus 18 and 22 and I'm going to read it. And let's see what this means then to uh, what this brother Benjamin, right? Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. So then for the brother to sit up there and say this, 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 and this, and it's all contrary to the Bible, it shows you right there that our people, so-called Blacks, Hispanics, Natives, we don't know the damn Bible. We don't. Because you got this dude sit up, sitting here and blatantly lying on his forefathers. Saying that our forefathers were celebrating homosexuality. No, brother. If you was a homosexual in ancient Israel, you would have been put to death right on the spot. You and your partner. And then you see this right here, judgment. Samaki, I had to remove his face. His face was like, it was giving me bad vibes over here. Con, you good. But, I mean, this is cool right here, too. This is one of the judgments that happened to uh, a bunch of, you know, people that lived in that lifestyle. The Most High judges these people. But he judges everybody, right? And he's going to use what he created, his creation, us humans, to judge other people. You know, you got a wicked brother who's committing murders. What's he going to do? He's going to use the police to judge that brother. Well, back in 2016, he had, uh, I, don't, I think it was a Ishmaelite or something. He stirred up that Ishmaelite to go shoot up this uh, homosexual club. And he killed a lot of people in that club. And we say all oh, praise to the Most High God, Yahweh, for that. Because these people need to understand that what they're doing is unnatural. That what they're doing is pushing and advocating madness and wickedness. And all you see now is what? 
running rampant within our community. So many young so-called black, Hispanic and native men and women running around trying to live that lifestyle. Well, guess what? We're not them. We're not them pastors that are going to sit here and lie to your face. We're going to do what the scripture says. Isaiah 58 and one tells us to cry aloud, cry aloud and spare not. We're not, you know, going to sit up here and pander and cater to your feelings. The scripture already says it's an abomination. Let's get uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, Baba Kishah, because the other dude, the Edomite pastor, Stalakia, said that you could be a homosexual and have faith in a Mashiach and you make it to heaven. Well, let's see what the scripture says, and I'll read it. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Remember, he said you could be a homosexual, believe in Christ, and you get into heaven, right? Well, let's see what scripture says. First Corinthians 6 and 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, nor fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So if you're doing any one of those things, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. And it specifically tells you right there, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. So who are these people up here sitting in these Christian churches, these Catholic churches lying and saying, yeah, you could do it. It's all good. You could be a believer and still be uh, a, a homosexual and then for the brother to sit up there and say he's a man of faith what faith do you have he says he believes in the divine no you don't because the most high already gave you an order he already gave you a charge as a man take a woman and multiply with a woman build ye houses as he said in the in the book of jeremiah take ye wives and build ye houses he doesn't say take ye men he didn't say to women, take more women. No. But yet you got that brother, you got the other brother, and you got the Edomite, and you got these other pastors up here sitting and lying in front of all people. Con, somebody uh, raise their hand. Con, um, Salaki, I got a quick quick preset for you to just back that up because, you know, he's talking about he got faith. That's cool. Well, James says, uh, um, even so, we're going to go James uh, 2, 17. It says, even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Mm -hmm. Yea, a man that. may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. You could say you have faith all day long, but unless you're doing those things, which the Most High commanded, that faith that you have is worth pennies means nothing con and uh i'm gonna grab these last couple of precepts to end it up uh end it off and then one last article um let's grab uh if uh Ania, are you still there con okay con um can you grab me jeremiah 23 and 1 and uh Mahal. If you could pull up Ezekiel um, 3 and 17. And then Kazak, you still there? Oh. Khan, can you grab me Ezekiel 34 and 2, Babkasha? So we'll start off with that Jeremiah 23. From there, we'll go to Ezekiel 34. And then from there, we'll jump to Ezekiel 3. But yeah, uh, whenever you got it, Ak, you can read it. All right, Khan. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Most High. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you Therefore, thus saith the Most High, God of Israel, 
against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Most High. You see that? So destruction to these pastors, destruction to these leaders, destruction to these celebs that are out here scattering the, the flock. And how they do that with these false ideologies, these false lies. They do that with the whole narrative of, yeah, you could be a homosexual because you're destroying the sheep when you tell them that. You're scattering the sheep. You have many people in our communities that say they don't believe in God because of something that happened in a Catholic or Christian church. There are a lot of so-called Black, Hispanics, and Natives right now that will tell you we don't believe in God because I went to church and this happened. My mom, she went to church and some, this happened to her. So that's why I don't believe because you have these wicked pastors. And now these wicked pastors want to push and advocate for homosexuality. Well, again, we read time and time again in the scriptures, you cannot do said thing and be uh, an inheritor of the kingdom. Now let's grab um, Ezekiel 34 and 2, Bible Um, It's the book of Ezekiel chapter 34. Um, I'm going to start at the top. Uh, Come. It says, and the word of the Most High came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Did not the shepherds feed the flocks? Let me keep going. Tom. Tom, verse three, ye eat the fat and ye clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. You see that? So again, the most high is saying, whoa, destruction unto these people, these shepherds, these pastors, these leaders, because they're not actually teaching our people how to clean themselves up. They're not telling the so-called black, Hispanic, and native man, woman, and child that you cannot live in a certain lifestyle and the Most High is going to actually accept you. They're not telling them that. Instead, they're saying, come as you are, come as you are, do all manner of wickedness, and it's all good. It's all gravy when it's not gravy. That's why we got to be out here and do what the Most High told us to do, which is actually wake our people up. Because we have to tell them. If you don't do what the Most High God said, you will face destruction. If you don't actually repent and change your life, you will face nothing but straight death, disease, plagues, and all types of problems in your life. And that's what we're trying to do with our people. Let me get that in uh, Ezekiel now 3 and 17, Bagasha. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 3 and verse 17, it says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. He didn't say everybody. So like, he didn't say everybody. He didn't say the Moabite. He didn't say the Ammonite. He didn't say the, the, the Edomite. Like, it's, it's self-explanatory. So, like, go ahead. No, you good. I, you good. Calm. Like how the brother Mahal was saying. To add on to that. Yeah, it's only for the children of Israel. Hence why this lesson, yeah, is going into the homosexuals, right? When we know that the Greeks and the Romans did practice that. But I don't care about the Greeks and Romans. They can stay being homosexuals. They do whatever they want because this message is not for them. This message is for the brothers and sisters that are out here trying to find a way, right, of the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native community. Well, here's the way that you are supposed to go. The narrow path. The narrow path tells you that you can't live certain lifestyle. The narrow path tells you how you must behave and how you have to comport yourself with your brethren. The narrow path tells you how you must worship and serve your God. And that one of those commandments and one of those ways he tells you is to not be a homosexual. 
he tells you that you cannot do these things, but yet our people want to ignore that, brush it, sweep it under the rug, and think that everything's gravy, thinking it's all good, that they can continue living in said practice, and that the Most High God is going to be with them. He will not. Matter of fact, it says in Proverbs that he will laugh at you when you go through problems because you didn't actually want to listen to him. That's Proverbs 1 and 26. When you were caught, when he was trying to call you, you didn't care. And the brothers and sisters that are out here in the truth trying to wake our people up and tell them about, hey, you can't be a homosexual. You can't be doing this. You want to ignore that. So then when sore calamity comes upon you, guess what happens? The most high is laughing at you. And so we're out here trying to warn our people from him because he's the one that actually causes death and destruction. Not the devil who the pastor lies to you about and says that the devil has control and power. What power does he have? The devil gets orders from the most high God, Yahweh. The demons get ordered from the most high God, Yahweh. He orders them around and says, you know what? I've been dealing with this brother for too long. He still does not want to listen to me. His time is up. I'm cutting it short. Make sure you get in a car. You, this demon, you get in a car. Make this dude get drunk and crash into him and kill him. That is what we're trying to do. That is why we're trying to tell our people that they need to repent, that they need to come back from, uh, uh, li you know, leave these wicked ways behind. Come back to Yahweh. Turn back to Yahweh. Don't turn your back on him. But our people want to continue walking around in madness. Let me um now get uh that CDC uh website, Bobka Shop. And then I'm gonna get one more precept after this and I'm gonna uh, call it night. It should be um con. And this is from the CDC. So it says right there, half of black gay men and a quarter of Latino gay men projected to be diagnosed within their lifetime. And this is um, the CDC and they're going into HIV. So these are the warnings that we're trying to tell our people. Because the most high, just like how we were reading in Romans, that they end up getting recompense. This is the recompense too. He may have a crazy dude just like with the shooting. He may have a crazy dude go out there and just spray the club up to get rid of all these sodomites. Or he'll just use another method, a slow killing, and he will give you a disease that will be stuck with you for the rest of your life. So now, if you go down, if you can read that uh, first paragraph, Bob Kisha. Huh. It said, if current HIV diagnosis rates persist, about one in two black men who have sex with men and one in four Latino men <laughs> sleeping with men in the United States will be diagnosed with HIV during their lifetime, according to a new analysis by researchers at the CDC. The mm -hmm. study presented today at the conference on retroviruses and opportunistic infections in Boston provides the first ever comprehensive national estimates of the lifetime risk of an HIV diagnosis for several key populations at risk in every state. As alarming as these lifetime risks are, they are not a foregone conclusion. They are a call to action, said the Edomite. Uh, director of CDC's National Center for HIV AIDS uh, viral hepatitis, STD, and tuberculosis prevention. The prevention and care strategies we have at our disposal today provide a promising outlook for future reductions of HIV infections and disparities in the U.S., but hundreds of thousands of people will be diagnosed in their lifetime if we don't scale up efforts now. You see that? So uh, how old is this blog? I think it's like 2019, 2020. Something like that. 20, what, 16? Con. Con, so it's a couple years old. I mean, we're not that far removed from it, 2024. So that was eight years ago. Hey, it but said, Slovakia, nothing has changed. It's gotten right. worse, like you said. 
it's gotten worse because now you got what happened? That was 2016. When what happened like last year? Monkey pox. You have monkey pox. You had all you got you have all these other damn STDs coming out because our people don't want to change. And how come? And this is how you know that the most high God is the God of the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and natives, because there's many other homosexuals out here, and yet they're not hit as hard with the diseases as we are. That's because he judges Israel first and foremost before judging any other nation. He's going to deal with us. I think because I've got something to say. Hey, Khan. Yeah, Salaki. You mind if I bring out a precept? I I'll go for it. All right, so it's actually um, a two-part. Um, I'm going to go into the curses. Come this is um, this is Deuteronomy 28 and 15. It says, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And one of the curses in verse 21 says the lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until he have consumed thee from off the land whither thou goest to possess it basically saying yeah you're gonna catch some of these diseases out here if you dis disobey my commandments and i'm um, going into what you're talking about you know man lying with man you know the the i guess the percentages are higher with us because you know you're dealing with us that's all i have Con, hey, that's a powerful point. And um, you can scroll down. They actually got a little chart on the website. Um, there you go, that little chart. I don't know if you could click that and blow it up. But that little chart, um, it tells you, like, the, the what is it, the races. And it has so-called, uh, you know, has so-called blacks. So Damn, the page. They, see, they deleted the page. You see that? Why would they do that? Delete it. Why would they delete the, the sheets? Well, maybe you could read it. I know it's very tiny from my point of yeah, view. Yeah, it, it just says, uh, let me see. It says uh, African American homos, uh, one and two, mm -hmm. uh, Hispanic homos, uh, one and four, and uh, Edomite homos. Who cares? Right. But it says right here that. That chart is for the lifetime risk of HIV. And who's leading it? Mm -hmm. Blacks. Why? That's because the Most High, he's judging us. The Most High is trying to correct us and tell us something. But our people don't want to hawk in because of what? Because they want to go to these churches to support their quote-unquote faith and beliefs. And they have these homo pastors up there lying and telling them that they can come as they are that they can do whatever they want. Well, you can't do that. You can't do whatever you want. And this is gonna be my last precept. And it's coming out of the words, out of Christ's own mouth. Hey, these so words, real quick, if, if I may, just to add on to Kazak's okay. point, which which precept you read, Kazak? That was 28 and okay. 21. Okay, 21. Let me, let me throw down, uh, let me throw down 59. 59 is crazy. It says, then Yahweh will make the make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance. Meaning mm. it's gonna be there and it ain't going nowhere. Right. And sore sicknesses and of long continuances. Uh moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt with which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. This is the kicker. 61, it says, also every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, them mm -hmm. will Yahweh bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Khan, Khan. Khan. Khan, yeah, and you don't see HIV, AIDS in the, in the, in the scriptures. Those are the diseases that are not written in the and yet our people they just don't want to get it so i'm gonna get this last precept and i'm gonna close it up with this and these are the words of a mashiach himself christ who they think that um 
that, you know, was a white dude who was a homosexual. And that is partly the main reason why there's so many homosexuals in the Christian and Catholic church, because the man that you worship, known as Caesar Bogier, he was a homosexual himself. He was also an incestual person who slept with his own sister. So, of course, this guy right here, this devil, of course, you're going to have so many homosexuals running rampant in the church because the God that you worship, this man right here, he himself is a homosexual. Monkey see, monkey do, right? That's what they say. So let me get this last uh, preset out of Amashiach's mouth. The real Christ, not this guy, not this sodomite, the real Christ who would look like a so-called black man on today's time, you know, they would label him as that. A brother with woolly hair, a brother with bronze skin complexion as if burned in a furnace. The real Mashiach with red eyes, not this dude who got brown eyes sometimes, other times his blue eyes. Here he has dark brown hair, other times his blonde hair. I thought... And scripture said that we were supposed to believe on a Mashiach, you know, as it is written in scriptures. They got this dude in like five different versions. But that's neither here nor there. Let's get this last preset. Uh, John 14 and 15, Baba Gesha. Khan, I'll read it. I got you, Art. Okay, Khan. The book of John, chapter 14 and 15, it says, if ye love me, mm -hmm. keep my commandments. And that's it. If you love God, if you love Christ and you're so-called black, Hispanic and native, what do you have to do? You have keep to keep my commandments. commandments. Simple as that. And homosexuality, that's a commandment. You cannot be a homosexual. You cannot be a pedophile. You cannot be a transgender. You cannot be any part of the LGBT whatever and say you love God because you're a liar. So plain and simple to my brothers and sisters that are out there watching, I hope this was edifying. I hope our people actually get the understanding and realize, hey, we can't be dealing with America like that. We can't be dealing with, you know, these people. And their customs we have to separate from all that we got to do what our god says and our gods told us that it's man with woman but with that my time is up i'm your brother shalak from the tribe of simeon out of yahweh's camp i want to say call la yahweh bashima mashiach yahweh shai barakatha yahweh barakatha yahweh shai call la yahweh bashima mashiach yahweh shai thwada yahweh thwada yahweh shai and uh yeah kwam yasharala kwam yasharala Peace out, Israel. Yeah, peace. Come on, Israel. Come on, Israel.